You want to know how to fix one of these? This right here is an ice merchandiser. It's outdoor. It holds ice and you've probably seen it at a supermarket or outside a gas station. Today I'm going to show you what I did and what could possibly be wrong with the one that you may be working on. Hit the like button, subscribe, and hit that bell, and let's get started with another video, HVAC tips for technicians. I'm Tad, let's go. Got some refrigerant just in case I need it, and this is Hot Shot, Hot Shot. Why do I have this? Because this unit is R12, and this is a replacement for R12, okay? R414, yay. So, got my tool bag, got my gauges hooked up. It's running, it wasn't running, it wasn't doing anything when I got here. And this right here is the power cord that runs through this little hood, and this hood was over the compressor. I found a dirty coil, which needs to be cleaned. I ordered a part for this unit because the compressor and everything wasn't coming on. And what I did was I checked my meter at the receptacle. There was 115 volts. Then I checked here by unplugging this, and there was 115 volts to this. And I was wondering what could be wrong with this and then I found this timer and this timer had voltage to it But was not outputting the voltage to the motor So I knew for sure. This is the only thing that could be bad. I ordered a timer. I've already replaced it It's wire for wire. There's only four wires. So super simple. Here's the old timer and this is a four-hour defrost timer so every four hours this will turn and whenever it turns, you can put a flathead screwdriver in there and actually uh, go ahead and turn it yourself to get it to click. But after four hours, it will cut the compressor and the fan off for defrost. Now, inside this little box here, we have our evaporator fan, and then we have a thermostat right here. And this is how you would turn this machine on. So you would use a flathead screwdriver and turn it down. Of course, it's old and you can't really see but it says right here turning off thermostat counterclockwise okay so counterclockwise turns off compressor only okay so this right here the voltage that comes to this it comes to the thermostat and then it goes to the compressor so anytime you turn it down it should close a set of contacts and it should provide power to that compressor okay it should turn it on now, I've had it running for about five minutes, haven't been here very long, but what can be wrong? Well, it could be that there's a bad fan or there could be a dirty coil, which I've got to clean that coil. That's why I got a water hose over here. It could be a bad defrost timer. It could be low of refrigerant. Right now it is running on, what is that, 35? I can't really see, why is it? Oh, there we go. Okay, so it's 25, 30, 35. So 35, that's pretty good. I'm gonna let this run for probably an hour or two and then use my infrared thermometer to check the box temperature. So we know that this thing should be below 32. That way the ice will stay cold, okay, and not melt. There's really not a lot to this thing. It's super simple. So if you've been asked to work on one of these machines, don't think that it's gonna be hard. Don't think that it's going to be difficult. There's very few parts involved. So it's not that hard. You can do it. I believe in you. Look at that beautiful coil now. Nice and clean with some water. Vapor temperature, vapor line is 37, 38 degrees. That's pretty good. I need to really let it run longer before I check the temperature, but let's see what it is. Ah, it needs a lot longer to run. So, oh yeah, it's cold in there. Very, very cold, man. But yeah, it's gonna take quite a while, but it's working, exciting. Oh wow, yeah, uh, 25 PSI, nice and cool. I'm gonna go ahead and put the cover back on and we'll see what happens. All right, we're going to check out this older defrost timer and just kind of talk a little bit here. This is uh, setting your meter to ohms. We're going to check the contacts from 3 to 4, which should be uh, normally closed, right? Because that's what that uh, symbol means. All right, so we're checking from 3 to 4. Should read resistance, man. All right, we read resistance. Now go from 2 to 3. 
should not read resistance, OL. And then from one to three should be the coil, 6.48, good deal. All right, let me show you some more info about this defrost timer. This is the part number here that you can use and you can search on the Google search bar and you can find several timers here, right? And then I found a installation operation manual here that's used for troubleshooting. And it shows we were working on this slant model. There's also an upright model. Uh, this right here is a wiring diagram that I found. You can pause the video and look at this wiring diagram if you'd like. I found this information as well. And this tells you about this timer. I found out that you can get this on Amazon. And also this timer is a four hour timer. So every four hours goes into defrost for around 16 minutes. So. All right, let's check and see what the box temperature is. Remember we need ice in here. 40, 39 degrees, 38 degrees, 41, 40. So it's really not there yet got some water in here looks like it's a little frozen is that yeah it's a little bit of ice oh it is it is frozen okay so the box temperature may be good enough to keep that ice frozen low side charging hose hooked up got my temperature probe hooked up and I'm not using this because it's on there pretty good. So I tried taking that fitting off so I could put the charging hose there, but no, I'm not gonna worry about it. So we got a pressure of 33 PSI and it says our superheat is four, so that's fantastic. And then that temperature on the suction line or vapor line from that compressor is 39 degrees. So that's pretty good. It says we're on R12 here. So we changed by pushing these buttons and then mode will change between the evaporator, temp, and superheat. Probably just need to wait a little longer and this box temperature will come down. They're gonna put some ice in here and we should be in good shape. Putting a cup of water in here is a great idea. Come back in a day or two, see if it's frozen. If it's frozen, then you know that the ice is not gonna melt, so. Good idea. Now they're ready to put some ice in here. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. If you don't, let me know who you are and where you're from. And this is Tad just showing you what I did to make the ice merchandiser work and hoping that by showing you this video that you'll understand that there's not a lot of parts and you can do this, okay? So, thanks for watching. You're watching HVAC Tips. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad and I'll keep you cool if you let me.